Welcome to Figure Feedback. My name is Jeremy, and this is an update to the AnyCubic security issue in which someone was able to gain access to the AnyCubic cloud and send unsolicited G code files to a large number of 3D printers. If you're not familiar with the whole situation, check out the card somewhere above my head or the link in the description to take you to the first video where I tell you about everything that happened. But since then, AnyCubic has now released an official statement acknowledging what happened, and that is what I wanna show you here today. There's a couple places that I found that they posted this, one on their official Facebook page, and then another one on Reddit, in the official AnyCubic subreddit. So let's take a look at that. So here is what the announcement says. Dear AnyCubic users, we sincerely apologize for the recent cloud security issue that happened to our customers. Taking responsibility for this incident, we deeply regret the delayed response. What happened? On February 26, we received a user's email reminding the vulnerabilities of the MQTT server of AnyCubic. On February 27th, multiple users reported the presence of, quote, hacked machine readme.g code on the screen of their AnyCubic Cobra 2 Pro slash plus slash max. At the time of this statement, a total of 237 devices have been affected. Preliminary findings suggest that over 2,000 devices have received this file. Upon investigating the logs customers sent to us, we found that these printers received remote commands to download message.txt documents from another cloud server, not the AnyCubic server, and renamed the message.txt to hacked machine readme.g code. We confirm that this incident was caused by a third party using a security vulnerability of the MQTT server to access users' printers. So that pretty much falls in line with the message that the hacker left inside of that hacked uh, machine readme.g code message. They specifically pointed out the vulnerability of the MQTT server, and now AnyCubic is confirming that that is exactly where the problem was. So now, how do they plan to solve this? They say that we have undertaken the following, the following measures. Strengthen the security verification steps of the cloud server. Strengthen authorization slash permission management in the cloud server. Currently improving the security verification of firmware. New firmware will be available on any Cubic official website by March 5th. And then further steps includes implementing network segmentation measures to restrict external access to services and conducting regular audits and updates for systems, software, and the MQTT server. Now, if you are still feeling a little bit hesitant about this whole thing and you want to make sure that your printer is going to be safe, then the best thing that you can do right now, especially since those firmware updates are not yet available, is to simply disconnect your printer from the internet using the software inside of the printer. It's also part of their recommended actions from AnyCubic, in which they say, if you find the hacked machine readme.g code file on the screen, please note that the file is harmless and can be manually deleted through the printer screen. Just like the, the hacker said, it was not harmless or it was harmless and any cubic has confirmed that. If you find the hacked machine readme.g code file on the USB drive, please delete the file using your PC. If the hack machine readme.g code file is not found on the printer, you're good to use the printer and the cloud service can also be used normally. For those who feel uncomfortable with the cloud service, you can easily disable the Wi-Fi via the printer screen. And then they included these screenshots here to show you exactly what you can do to disconnect your Wi-Fi. Further recommendations. Now it's interesting that they're only talking about the Cobra 2 Pro, Cobra 2 um, Plus, and the Max printers. There was a, an assumption that any printer that was connected to the AnyCubic cloud was basically open to this type of vulnerability. But for some reason, I'm not sure why, they're only focusing on these three printers. So they're saying um, if you do own one of those printers to download the new update uh, firmware, and that the um, over-the-air firmware is optional, but you know that's not going to be available until the fifth or around the fifth. Um, avoid downloading firmware updates from unknown sources. Users who use USB sticks are advised to conduct an antivirus scan on their PC. 
We understand the widespread concern of this issue. We are responsible for issue occurrence and assure users that addressing it is our utmost priority. The AnyCubic team is ready to assist in resolving the matter. And then if you have any issues, you can contact them at their email address service .any, at anycubic3d.com. So here they're just um, uh, apologizing again for the situation and asking for feedback. And they also say, since cloud services are widely used nowadays, we're actively seeking professional cloud security solutions to enhance the security of any Cubix cloud platform. So this issue has also just sort of reignited the demand from some users that um, they should open up the software on their printers so that you don't have to go through the AnyCubic cloud if you want to do things like Wi-Fi printing so that you can just use your own network locally without having anyone in the middle. And that way you can be more protected against things like that. And then there's also concerns about things like potential uh, IP theft when you send maybe things that you're working on that's confidential through the cloud. And there's the concern, what if someone were to take it and start doing something with it themselves. So that's also a, a cause of concern and why people want to just be able to use their local networks and just cut AnyCubic's cloud out of it entirely. So yeah, that is it. That's the latest on this AnyCubic situation. I'm glad that they came out and addressed it um, when they did and didn't just sit on their hands and wait and hope for the whole thing to blow over. But it's still a pretty huge issue and it's definitely shaken up the confidence that uh, many people have in using these 3D printing uh, cloud-based services because there seems to be always an issue going on with one of these companies that produces these printers. And uh, I think just being able to do things locally is definitely the way to go moving forward, giving people the option to do that and not just strictly relying on a cloud service to provide you with that kind of service. But yeah, that is it for now. Um, and as usual, if anything changes about this, I'll keep my eye on it. And if there's an update, I'll be sure to let you know. So till then, take care of yourselves and I'll speak to you soon.